19, a year of drama. Big things are happening. The King of England and the Prince of Wales review the captured German fleet at Scapa Flow. Clemenceau and Wilson, Lloyd George and Orlando write history in the Treaty of Versailles. Rough Rider Theodore Roosevelt, that great advocate of Americanism, has gone to his last rest. In the world of sport, Babe Ruth, the home run king, is sold by the Red Sox to the Yankees for a fabulous sum. But 1919's big moment is about to take place. A heavyweight championship match between Jess Willard and the comparatively unknown Jack Dempsey. That's news, big and exciting news. And the man responsible for it is promoter Tex Rickard, the silent adventurer from Alaskan mining camps in South American Pampas with his genius for ballyhoo and publicity. In Dempsey, he has a sensational young tiger with amazing speed and two murderous hands. In Willard, the biggest man to hold the title under Marcus of Queensbury rules. Jess has the muscles of a wrestler and the sheer power of a raging bull when his temper's aroused. He stands six feet six inches in height and weighs 240 pounds. His great arching chest measures 56 inches. Though half a foot taller and 50 pounds heavier than his rival, the tall pine of the Potawatomi is rated only a five to four favorite over the Manassas Mauler. The 70,000 spectators pack around the ring in the blistering sunshine. 120 degrees of horrible, enervating heat. They send a mighty shout to the sky as Dempsey climbs to the ropes, accompanied by his manager, shrewd Doc Kearns in striped silk shirt and white cap. An umbrella is raised to protect Jack from the burning rays of the sun while he waits for this most unusual battle in all heavyweight history to begin. Here comes the champion, big and good natured, smiling and waving to the applause. He's certain he'll win. All the advantage is on his side. He strides across the ring to say hello to the boy who had the nerve to challenge him. May the best man win and all that sort of thing. But Jess knows who is the best man. He is. When he walks back to his corner, there's the strut of the victor in his manner. There's nothing for him to fear from the black-browed youngster who came up from the hobo jungle. But Dempsey? Dempsey is destruction itself becomes static only till that bell will send him into action. The championship belt of gold and silk is paraded for all to see. Symbol of every heavyweight king from John L. to Willard himself. Gloves have been brought out now and fitted to their big boned hands. The referee, Ollie Picord, calls Willard and Dempsey from their corners for instruction. Now you can see what a difference there is in their size. Though a great athlete, the bronze challenger seems almost puny next to the giant he's about to fight. They listen quietly, almost without interest to a story they know by heart. Sweat beating shoulders and foreheads. The crowd waits tensely. Who'll win? Willard with his fine jab and smashing uppercut, or Dempsey with his speed and the best left hook of all time? Round one coming up. The timekeeper jerks his bell cord. Somehow it jams. And Willard doesn't hear the faint sound over the excited yelling. He pauses, looks around, puzzled, doubtful. Say, hey, what's going on around here anyhow? Where's the bell? There it is. So the big fight begins, and Big Jess moves easily into action. The mahogany hued Dempsey circles, moving in and out with cat footed quickness. The champion wants to keep Jack at long range with his poking left jab, but Dempsey won't let him do it. He's never still for an instant bobbing and weaving around. It looks like a test of speed against power, and Willard has no chance to get set against Dempsey's speed. At such a pace, there's a lot of missing and a lot of pinching. It's bound to be that way, but it's only a warm-up so far. Each is trying to figure out the other's defense, to open him up, nail him with a punch. The challenger crowds, keeps on crowding. The instant he's in the open, he moves back again. His left whips in tirelessly and often. The blows miss or graze Willard. Dempsey hasn't the range yet. Jess holds whenever he can, but that's Jack's meat. Nobody's strong enough to tie him up for long, and trying to hit him is like trying to hit a sunbeam that moves away. Dempsey's hands are in motion all the time. Willard tries to block with gloves and forearms and elbows, but he's compelled constantly to retreat. What else can he do against the endlessly moving little man? When you're going away, you can't do much damage yourself. A champion is supposed to make the fight, but try as he will, it's far beyond Big Jess. But he hasn't been hurt yet, 
for all the charging, for all the blows, that Paul Payne has suffered no injury. He's clever, knows how to handle himself, and in spite of his great size, he moves around quickly and gracefully. No, the little man won't get him. They maneuver around the side of the ring. Now watch, watch. There's that big left, and Willard's down. Up, sure he's up. Dempsey heard him along the rope, beating away with both hands. There's that left again, and Willard's on the floor for the second time. The champion stays groggy, but he's game. He's up again. The fist drumming on him. And down he goes. Crawls along the floor like a wounded animal, crouching with his back half turned as he arrives. The mauler overwhelms him with a hysterical burst of fury that sends him to the floor for the fourth time. Dempsey stands over the stricken man, his fist cracked. The instant Willard knees her off the floor, Jack at him again. Just as wide open, he has absolutely no defense. And he hits the deck again. Courage, just plain courage, instinct, whatever it is, flings him blind and staggering up to his feet. Willard reels around the ring, powerless, with Dempsey pumping right and left into it. Clear across the object corner, and there he's taking it again. How can the man stand it? And there he falls, his gloved hand feeling for the rope, trying to hold himself up. Then, painfully, he drags his racked body to a happy wreck position. But a right smashes into his side. Other rights crash to the head, and Willard collapses into a sitting position, dazed and helpless, after the most murderous beating a man ever took in the ring. And there's the bell. But no one hears it. Dempsey turns away. He seems doubtful, puzzled. Turns and others rush jubilantly into the rope square. It's all over the quickest heavyweight knockout on record. Jack hurries out of the ring to avoid the crowd. But the timekeeper and referee Ollie Picard are yelling that it's not over. The bell had sounded before Big Jess was counted out. Where is the challenger anyway? Willard's chief second, Walter Monahan, and the other handlers have leaped into the ring to bring their man to. The champion seems helpless, but technically the fight is still on. Doc Kearns rushes to the rope. Jack, hey Dempsey, come back, come back. Round two, and the bell sounds again. Amazingly enough, Willard rises for the second round. Beaten as no man ever has been, he advances into Dempsey's raging fist. He jabs as though any jab could keep that tiger away from him. With all his wearied, broken body, Jess does his best to keep going. Why? It's no use. He hasn't a chance. But there's the tradition of all champions behind him. He has to fight even when he has nothing left to fight with. Jess may not have been a great champion, but no braver man ever laced on a pair of gloves. If he quit under punishment, no one would blame him. It's courage, nothing but magnificent courage that's holding him on his feet. No matter what he does, he can't get away from that tiger who's stalking. His arms and legs are heavy with exhaustion. Salt sweat burns the gash as Dempsey's fist have opened. When Jack bores in and hits him, drives him around the ring, he can't muster enough strength for a dangerous punch in return. There's no mercy in Dempsey. A technicality robbed him of a first round knockout, but that knockout will not evade him now. The seconds and minutes are ticking by faster and faster. There isn't much time left in the round. If he's to get his KO before the bell rings, he'll have to do it in a hurry. But Willard's only thought is to protect himself, and weak and tired as he is, it's no sense to get him set for the finishing punch, even when he's driven helplessly back against the rope. He wobbles about and flinches, does his best to save himself from his relentless foe. There are only a few seconds remaining now. No chance for a finishing blow. It's too late. Mahler spins the champion around out there in the center of the ring. But there's the bell, and referee Picard sends his men to the corner. Round three, and at the start of the third, there's no easing up in Dempsey's attack. His left hook still thunders. In the clinches, Willard is no longer strong enough to make even a pretense of blocking the uppercut that shake and hurt him. Still, the clinches are the only sanctuary left him. Out in mid-ring, he's helpless. He's lost all coordination between brain and hand. His efforts are pitiful. 
He was big and good-looking and smiling when he came into the ring. Now he's a lurching, tottering wreck of a man. Dempsey beats at him in the body, shifting his attack for a moment from that pitiful face. A new champion's being born here, born in the torrid heat among the yells of 70,000 spectators, born in blood and effort and pain. It's bad for Willard, taking the hammer blow to the ring's greatest puncher, but it's no picnic for the man who's winning either. His lungs strain, his heart beats in his throat, his arms are like lead, but still he carries on that deadly attack. He pours leather at the giant, who should have gone down long ago, who would have gone down, but for the heart of a lion and the endurance of a buffalo. Even the spectators are beginning to flinch at the sight. This is no fight, it's a slaughter, a massacre. Big Jess has no more chance than a babe in arms. Look at the heavyweight champion of the world. His face is pounded almost to a pulp. His tired, dazed eyes peer through a mask of blood. It's stripped down over his body, stained his trunk, spotted his legs. Even Dempsey's smeared with the sanguinary fluid. Each time the Mahler goes into the clinch, he gets more of it. Why doesn't the referee stop it? Why? But Ali Picard comes from the old school. There's only one way for a champion to finish, they say, and that's on his back. But the bloody half-blinded Willard won't go down. Not even when the tiring Dempsey's blows stagger and hurt him more and more. And again, the seconds are running out. The round's nearly over. And the impossible has happened again. Big Jess has lasted through this murderous, another murderous round with this roaring Dempsey. Now coming up for round four, but Willard can't come out for the fourth round. His nose and cheekbone are fractured, ribs broken, half a dozen teeth knocked out, and he's hardly strength enough to rise and shake hands with his conqueror. In this most unusual of fights, an idol has been born. Dempsey the Mauler, unusual every second of it. The bell failed to sound clearly at the start. The champion was knocked down seven times in the first round. The challenger left the ring and had to be called back. Willard lost his title while sitting in his corner. Every minute is crammed with drama, as the ring is now with yelling, excited men. Dempsey's in everyone's minds and hearts. Dempsey the killer, Dempsey the champion. They'll see him in action for eight flaming years to come. 1921, when he knocked out the slim war eagle of France, Georges Carpentier, in Boyle's historic 30 acres. 1923, when he beat the master boxer, Tommy Gibbons, in the dusty cow town of Shelby, Montana. 1923 again, when he starred in the most murderous melodrama the ring ever saw against the wild bull of the pampas, Louis Angel Furpo. 1926, under Philadelphia's rain-drenched skies when he lost his championship to Gene Tunney. 1927, when he made his slashing comeback against Jack Sharkey. And again in 1927, when he came within seconds of winning back his championship from the Marine who took it from him. It was before this sun-blistered crowd that Jack Dempsey, the champion, was born. A champion who's come down through the years as the greatest idol the fight game ever knew. Thank <laughs> you.